I'm going to present uh, Am Amnesia, which is a data uh, tool for data anonymization. Uh, what it does, and it's kind of innovative, it is uh, that it provides anonymization and not uh, pseudonymization. Elisa already gave you uh, an overview of the basic difference between the two notions. I will uh, complement with uh, a few comments here. Amnesia is being developed at the Athena Research Center in Athens, Greece, and it has been supported uh, by several uh, by open air and several projects that uh, uh, participate in the creation of open air. So, okay, a, a big motivation for um, uh, for everyone uh, working on data anonymization is the GDPR. Uh, I'm not going to go into details now since uh, I think Elisa covered the motivation uh, the motivation thing. Um, so, uh, a solution when we have personal data is, uh, and at the same time we want to use them with uh, third parties, is uh, to anonymize them. Uh, so, uh, when does anonymization work well? It works when you don't need to identify the, the person. This is not always the case. For example, some medical studies, you need the name of the patient so you can go and uh, do further uh, exams and uh, examinations. And uh, also when reduction in information quality is tolerable. Right? You have models, statistical, that can work with uh, losing some accuracy on the data. Um, I will, uh, I, Elisa already uh, told you about the difference between anonymization and pseudonymization. I want to stress uh, again a few properties. Uh, anonymized data are different from the original data. Uh, also anonymized data according to the GDPR are no longer uh, personal data. So they are not constrained by the GDPR whereas pseudonymized data uh, remain personal data and they and they are still uh, and they still have to be treated uh, with all the limitations imposed of uh, uh, from GDPR. Uh, so the, the key idea from a technical point of view is that anonymization performs the transformation of the data that is irrevocable. There's no way from uh, for a third party or an adversary, uh, even using uh, other data sets to re-identify uh, or to reverse this transformation and uh, uh, get the original data. Whereas uh, pseudonymization, uh, it is uh, constrained in the removal of uh, some identifiers. So there's no guarantee that it cannot be uh, reversed. That does not mean that it's uh, useless. It's an important uh, measure for protecting uh, user privacy, but the data remain, uh, although protected, they remain personal. Uh, let me see. I think we have some questions in the chat. Okay. Um, so, um, the basic re reasons to anonymize is uh, that you can guarantee uh, that, that you can. Uh, upkeep the trust of the people that gave you the data without exposing them and breaking their privacy. And also that uh, you have, if you have anonymized the data, you are no longer uh, inside the scope of GDPR. So there, there are no legal limitations. Um, so um, this nice, uh, Nice, okay, I shouldn't self, uh, uh, doing a self-assessment. This introduction uh, presented uh, the, the benefits of anonymization. And until now it looks a bit of a magical thing. If you only think uh, the introduction that you go, you anonymize the data and then, well, uh, you can, uh, the users are protected and uh, GDPR uh, is no longer relevant. Well, the, the, there's important limitations uh, on what anonymization can achieve, and there's always a cost. Uh, the most obvious one is that uh, we lose uh, in terms of information quality. 
And I will give you an example and I will present more details on it later. Uh, a way to reverse the anonymization is through uh, secondary information. For example, your date of birth and your zip code. So you may remove the name if you have a catalog where you have the names, the zip code and the date of birth of uh, people and you remove the names, you have pseudo anonymized data. To get the data really anonymized, you have to uh, remove the accuracy on uh, the date of birth and on the zip code. So they will no longer be unique. So when we do, when we do anonymize the data, uh, the original data are transformed. The, anon the anonymized data are usually are different from the original and some uh, accuracy has been lost. Another thing is that uh, although GDPR is, uh, presents a clear distinction between pseudo-anonymization and anonymization, in practice and from a technical point of view, things are not so clear cut. There are gray areas between what is anonymized and pseudo-anonymized. Um, data transformation may, may not be fully re reworkable, but may be partially reworkable. So uh, some information, but not all may be revealed. And that's why we have several uh, forms of uh, uh, data anonymization guarantees where each of them protects uh, the data in a different way. Uh, I will present an example here, although I will not delve yet, uh, in these presentations on the, this gray boundary. And the last limitation is uh, that uh, it is not a process that uh, can be easily automated. Uh, this is uh, because it's complicated and there are always user choices to um, that are needed and also because it's a new process and there's not enough experience to just have uh, a long-term experience from the industry on how it is usually done on what is uh, usually important. Uh, so because information is lost, uh, it is uh, important that the user guides the information process and uh, limits the loss to the important uh, parts of the information and guides uh, the transformation uh, to work on the less, less, less important uh, parts of the personal information. Um, so uh, another important question is when you want, uh, when uh, to anonymize. Uh, and sometimes this uh, question comes uh, uh, in, uh, with respect to encryption, when to encrypt and when to anonymize. Uh, so we anonymize the data when the, uh, the recipient of the data is not uh, completely trustworthy and uh, or we do not have uh, uh, the legal right or we do not want to ask the consent of the users to give this data. So by anonymize them, we can give them to audiences uh, audiences that uh, have not been authorized to receive the personal data. On the other hand, if you have uh, uh, techniques like uh, encryption, uh, uh, this work well uh, when you, you want to ensure the security of the, tra of, uh, uh, the data transfer channel, but they do not protect you against the recipient. Uh, and think it like this. Uh, when someone gets anonymized data, then they cannot reverse the transformation. The, uh, the guarantee we have is that they will not uh, discover uh, anything more than what they get. When you get uh, encrypted data, you, uh, you get the decryption key, uh, so you can, use, uh, you can rediscover the original data and use them. So the encryption uh, helps uh, to transfer the data with uh, safety, whereas the anonymization helps uh, in limiting the, the personal information that the recipient of the data gets. So uh, to uh, advertise a bit Amnesia, uh, we have, uh, it's freely available. We have given, we have put a lot of effort in making it uh, user-friendly, uh, although I admit it remains a complicated tool. Uh, you can download it and uh, use it locally. Uh, 
Uh, it's, uh, we do have it as a service, but that's mostly for training and demo purposes. On the Amnesia site, if you want to use it safely and the recommended practice is to download it and use it on uh, your own premises so the data never leave, uh, the, the original data never leave uh, your, uh, your computer or any kind of infrastructure that you have in uh, your institution. Um, it gives many options to the user on how they customize the anonymization process. Uh, it has some unique features on anonymizing uh, co uh, complex data, uh, set value data. We're going to see that very briefly. And uh, it offers K anonymity, which is uh, again a variant of K anonymity that works well for complicated high dimensional data. And the last thing is that uh, it does not work only through. Uh, the uh, graphical interface that I'm going to demonstrate here. Uh, it also works as command line and through uh, REST uh, web services. So it can be in, the anonymization engine can be incorporated in other information systems. Um, I think that uh, these are the total statistics just one, two months uh, ago. We had uh, 63k visitors in the Amnesia site, uh, almost 200k page views, and more than 3,000 unique downloads. So uh, it's becoming popular as people explore uh, the solutions for anonymizing data. Uh, as far as we know, there's uh, no big vendor that has a solution that does uh, data anonymization. There are some other academic prototypes, but vendors have. Uh, uh, are still uh, the big vendors, you know, like Oracle, uh, uh, they're limiting uh, themselves in uh, pseudo anonymization and have not offered uh, uh, anonym uh, pure anonymization solutions. Um, so, if we want to sum up where we are now with Amnesia, uh, Amnesia offers K anonymity and KM anonymity, it works on simply relational tables, on object relational tables. Uh, it works uh, uh, for very large data sets that uh, do not uh, fit in the main memory, but they reside on the disk. It offers a uh, programmable API to work with other information systems. And also it has been up for more than two years. So uh, it's, it's uh, the main uh, functions are mature enough. Uh, bugs have been diminished. We're always adding new features. So in new features, some things may come up, but uh, in the basic anonymization uh, functions, uh, uh, we have uh, extensive testing and usage until now. So uh, they're quite reliable. <clears throat> so till now I gave you a theoretical uh, overview on what is anonymization, what is not anonymization, how pseudo anonymization works. Uh, I'm going to give you here an example so you can uh, understand what we do in practice and what does uh, Amnesia uh, do. So imagine that we have this data set which is basically very simplified medical uh, records that have been pseudo anonymized, right? There are no names. Uh, the names have been replaced by just an ID. Uh, so just by looking at them, it's not easy to do uh, some reverse engineering or discover uh, the identities of the person behind its record, but the data are not yet anonymous. Uh, and let's see why. Uh, first of all, assume that each record refers to a different person and we have some uh, Descriptional uh, data, the zip code, the age uh, of the person and the nationality. Uh, these data are, do not reveal some sensitive information and uh, it is easy to, uh, to come by uh, from different sources, right? It's easy to know uh, where someone lives or wh when he was born so, and the nationality. So it's easy to use this data to identify persons. And for these reasons, we, uh, we call them quasi-identifiers. And we have one sensitive attribute, um, which we consider that it's not common knowledge and uh, 
actually the privacy of the, uh, the patients will be breached if uh, a third person manages to recognize uh, a record and then, inf uh, and then know uh, what the diagnosis have been for this uh, person. So uh, now if we know that somebody is 20 years old uh, and just by looking the data, we can say, oh, this is his record. We have only one person that's 20 years old. So uh, he suffers from uh, heart disease. Or if we know the zip code uh, in, okay. Well, then uh, the zip codes are not unique, but if you know the nationality and the zip code, then probably uh, you get a, a unique value for their disease. So what can anonymity does is, uh, is that it guarantees that any, th any third party that knows uh, uh, the, the values of the quasi identifiers for a person will not be able to isolate uh, less than four uh, than K candidate records uh, in the anonymized data set. So here you see the original uh, pseudo-anonymized data set on the left and the anonymized data set on the right. Uh, if a third party uh, knows the age, the zip code and the nationality of a person, then in the anonymized record, there will be at least uh, for in the anonymized data set, there will be at least four records that will match uh, this background knowledge. Uh, so uh, this is a four anonymous uh, uh, data set. By increasing uh, K, having a 10 anonymous or 20 anonymous uh, data set, we increase the uh, strength of the protection. So if I knew that uh, Ivan was 28 years old, from this uh, data set, I would infer that he has heart disease. And if, but if I see just anonymized data set, I understand that he is in the first group, that one of these uh, records is his, but I do not know which. So uh, th this is uh, a process that uh, it is irrevocable. By seeing this data, we cannot uh, go back uh, to the original data. If we know the quasi-identifiers of a person, we cannot identify, we cannot reconstruct uh, the original value. Uh, still, the, as I told you, there are always gray areas. For example, okay, oh, I'm sorry, I have to move that. If I know that someone is in his 30s, then I know he belongs in this group. Can anonymity holds, I cannot understand which record belongs to him. But since all persons in uh, this group suffer from cancer, I can infer that uh, she or he ha uh, have cancer. And uh, th this is a theoretical weakness. Uh, the, uh, the data set uh, remains uh, anon uh, uh, it, it remains anonymous, the guarantee holds, but there are always ways in every guarantee to get, uh, to, to, to do some kind of inference. Uh, so the decision on the guarantee and the strength of the guarantee uh, lies uh, with the DPO. Uh, but from a legal perspective, if you have chosen uh, a, a, a guarantee and you have anonymized the data and you have take all precautions, then you can uh, uh, you can claim and uh, justify that you have taken all the reasonable measures to protect uh, user privacy. So what Amnesia does is it performs this transformation. You provide the value for K that you want uh, to achieve and it transforms the data from the original form to uh, the, anonym, uh, the anonymous form by generalizing the data. Uh, by, uh, we call this substitution of uh, uh, the specific values of the original data with uh, the more generic values in the anonymized data as a generalization. So uh, here we have a generalization of uh, the age of uh, uh, patients and uh, Instead of giving the exact age, we just give an age category, less than 30, uh, 30 to 40, and more than 40. And uh, this is a kind, this 
a reduction in the information quality that allows us to group more uh, records together so uh, a third party cannot uh, identify the exact record of a person. Now, I'm sorry, to be able to do this uh, substitution, we need to provide to the algorithm some uh, instructions on how to do these replacements. Uh, for numerical values and general values that come from a continuous uh, domain uh, with a total order, uh, this, this is usually easy and intuitive. For example, uh, if we want to uh, tell the, uh, if we have uh, the uh, birth dates or the age of a person, uh, we can tell the algorithm, but you know, get the exact age. And if, uh, the, if giving the exact age in the anonymized data violates the privacy guarantee, then present the age in terms of decades. And if the decades are not enough, then you can present, present them in some other category in 20 year periods. And if nothing works, then just uh, uh, delete the age and put an asterisk there. So uh, this is the more complicated form of input that uh, these algorithms work. And it is the generalization hierarchy, which in other words, is the set of rules on how to iteratively abstract, uh, how to iteratively generalize the data uh, that uh, the algorithm will find in the original data set. So we need to tell them how to abstract the aids, how to abstract uh, the, the zip code, which is uh, basically to start removing the least important digit on uh, the zip code and uh, nationality could be, you know, from uh, country, it could go up to uh, unions or uh, different uh, areas in the world and then to, to nothing. So uh, the user must, uh, must always give this, uh, this information on how to replace the original data. And uh, this constitutes one of the most complicated things that uh, a user has to do. Now, okay, I'm going to just very briefly present uh, more, uh, the more complex uh, anonymization process that uh, 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 okay, let me check. Uh, okay, I was seeing the questions. Okay, I think we're okay. Um, now, a difficulty with uh, creating groups uh, that have identical quasi-identifiers uh, is uh, that you have what we call in data management, the curse of dimensionality, which basically means the more quasi-identifiers that you have, uh, the harder it is to uh, create groups where they have the same values for each quasi-identifier. Uh, in practice, we, we do have records that uh, have a huge selection of uh, different quasi identifiers and think a co completely different data set. Uh, think a data set that has records from retail stores. You go to the supermarket and you buy uh, several products. Now, the supermarket might have 20,000 products and you've bought uh, 20 of them. So, uh, if you consider uh, the fact that you buy or didn't buy. Uh, a product from the 20,000 products uh, as a quasi-identifier, then you actually have 20,000 uh, quasi-identifiers and everybody is unique based on what they bought and what they didn't buy. So if we try to uh, follow the original uh, canonymity, we will uh, end up with uh, the only possible solution uh, being that we don't publish anything. Because if you want uh, every user to be identical to other even three, four users, then uh, you will have to change their, the, uh, the things they bought so much that uh, they will uh, have nothing to do with the, the original. Because when you have so many choices, everybody becomes unique. So a way to limit this effect is uh, to say that, you know, we're not going to protect users uh, uh, 
against adversaries that know any quasi identifier, uh, that know 20,000, uh, that, that know if you bought or didn't buy 20,000 products, we're going to protect you against uh, more reasonable adversaries that just know uh, if you bought up to M things or not. So in a way we limit the number of quasi identifiers we take uh, into account in, in each case. And we have this KM anonymity that guarantees that any combination of uh, M quasi identifiers will appear at least in K records. Uh, and this is significantly different than uh, the guarantee of K anonymity that uh, says that all quasi identifiers will be identical in K records. And the difference shows when you have a huge uh, selection of different quasi identifiers. Uh, here is uh, an example of uh, users. Okay, I don't have exact products, I have product uh, categories, and uh, how the 2 2 anonymous data set would look, uh, which is uh, the one in the bottom. And actually, the guarantee that we have here is that if I know that a person bought up to two products, then there will be at least two other, uh, at least one other person that has uh, uh, bought these products. And this is a weaker, but it's still uh, a statistical guarantee that uh, uh, that offers provable uh, irrevocability to to the algorithm. So uh, there are some uh, limitations uh, also to the tool uh, uh, that uh, some are inherent uh, to all the tools that uh, uh, anonymization is not a well-established technique and uh, users try to use the tool and they do not know exactly what to expect. So it's a lot harder to Use it. Uh, use a tool that uh, that does something you, you do not know well, even at the theoretical level. And this is uh, a, a significant problem that lim limits the ease of use of uh, amnesia. Uh, amnesia does the technical part, but it does not offer uh, advice on. Uh, how to choose the anonymization parameters. It won't tell you, you know, K, K equal to five is a good uh, value for K. This is a decision that has to be taken uh, completely by the user. And finally, uh, it is limited by the type of guarantees that it protects. Uh, Amnesia now has K anonymity and KM anonymity. These are one of the simplest uh, guarantees that uh, exist in research literature, but still we believe that they're a big step from uh, the pseudo anonymization uh, solutions that are actually in the market. So uh, at the moment, we put uh, most effort in making the tool um, easy to use and able to cover different types of data sets and less on adding more and more complicated uh, data anonymization guarantees because we think uh, that uh, uh, we need a lot of. Uh, experience in practice and to get some feedback from the industry to see on if they're actually interested in more complicated and more strict guarantees or if they're interested more in uh, the easy application of simple guarantees. So I think that was uh, all the theoretical presentation. I think we can have some uh, questions now or uh, uh, before uh, I go forward with the demo. Uh, if you want me to uh, discuss something uh, again or anything. This is uh, the first version of uh, the first uh, screen of Amnesia. Uh, you can download uh, this, the latest version. Beta is wrong here. It's just one, two, four. That's available. Uh, uh, in Amnesia site and you can download it and uh, use it directly. This runs uh, locally. Um, Amnesia is, uh, uh, has a clear separation between the data anonymization engine and the front end. So uh, you see it as uh, a standalone application, but it actually has uh, an engine that runs through 
uh, web server that offers REST API, and you have uh, also a front end uh, that uses uh, HTML and JavaScript to do the graphical interface. But when you download it and you use it on your computer, both the server and the client are uh, reside locally in your computer. But this flexibility can allow you to have, you know, in different computer in your own premises and use it inside a safe uh, internet or just use the anonymization engine. Uh, so the first thing that we have to do is uh, load the original data. Uh, I have prepared a simple uh, file, which is uh, actually a synthetic file that uh, resembles um, cut down versions of uh, health records from uh, UK hospitals, uh, the data we used in the project. So they're quite realistic. Uh, until now, the Amnesia uses uh, simple uh, delimited files. So when you import them, uh, what you have to do is similar to how you import text files in Excel you load the file and you put the delimiter that uh, that delimits different uh, columns in uh, your data and uh, then uh, amnesia uses the delimiter to find the different columns it gets the column name from the first uh, line of uh, the data and it guesses the type of the column based on the first record. So uh, string, integer, and date are guesses. Uh, here, all guesses are correct, but they, they might not be. Uh, it does not read the whole data set. It just reads uh, the first, I don't remember how many values, and guesses uh, ba uh, based on them what the type of data is. So the user can change it at will. Um, Okay, so the first thing we have to do is choose which data will uh, reside in the, anonym, uh, in the anonymous uh, data set. So the first thing I do is I remove the direct identifiers, the NHS number and the name. Uh, if I just remove this and save the data, uh, it's a kind of pseudo, uh, it's already pseudo anonymous. Uh, but I want to have really anonymous data, so I will go forward and now my data set is this it has first the diagnosis codes the diagnosis codes are uh, codes that are used uh, internationally to uh, to specify different uh, types of diagnosis and now this is uh, a set valued attribute as we call it in data management it's just it's one column where the field has an arbitrary number of different uh, diagnosis codes. Uh, for this ex example now, we will just consider that this information is not quasi identifiers and somebody cannot be identified by this information, but they can be identified by the other two columns, their date of birth and their marital status. So what we have to do here is uh, tell the algorithm how to abstract how to present in different uh, levels of granularity the date of birth and the marital status. Uh, for the marital status, we have uh, created a generalization hierarchy by hand uh, because the values are not a lot and they're simple. Uh, this comes from uh, the original data comes from uh, real data, so the answers are not uh, that well uh, restricted or they do not always make sense. So instead of people writing if they are in a relationship, if they are married or not, uh, they just gave answers like, no, I'm divorced, I'm widowed. Sometimes too much, sometimes too little information. So uh, we just uh, say that these are grouped to somebody being single uh, and uh, this have uh, and yes is uh, has is uh, just replaced by married. So we have one uh, generalization hierarchy that has been created uh, by hand, and we can generate another hierarchy uh, semi automatically using uh, the original data set. So. We choose auto generate, uh, we choose the attribute that uh, from the original data that we're going to use uh, 
for creating the hierarchy and we're going and we're deciding on the type uh, uh, of, the, of the data. Uh, this will be a hierarchy uh, that will define ranges on the original data because uh, the original data dates. So we can have continuous uh, ranges, one week, one month, uh, three months and whatever. And uh, it's of type date. So the, the idea here is that if you have some kind of continuous attribute, you can define uh, ranges and then group uh, these ranges to uh, bigger ranges and so on. Uh, if, this if this data were numbers and we're using the decimal uh, system, that could be very easy, easy. For example, if it was a salary, then you could say that, you know, group the exact salary in uh, 1,000 euro uh, uh, steps. Uh, and then uh, ranges, and then uh, this 1,000 euro, group them to 5,000, to 10,000, so on, till you have uh, any salary. Uh, but uh, the case of date is the most complicated one, because in practice, we do not use the decimal system, but you, we use a very complicated system uh, that has days, and we group every seven days to one week. So. Uh, first of all, I would like the date of birth to group to be grouped in uh, seven day periods. And then if these seven day periods uh, are not enough, I would like it to be grouped in terms of months and uh, to be grouped in three month uh, periods. And then if the three month periods are not enough, uh, let's group it to two year periods. And if these two year periods are not enough, then from then on, just group it in uh, uh, in group uh, whatever groups you create. Group them in uh, uh, groups of uh, three till you just reach uh, one uh, node, and you get something like this. Not something you get exactly this thing, and uh, here you have the seven day periods. And here you have the three month periods and here you have the two year periods. And from then on, every three nodes are grouped to one node till we reach uh, uh, a range uh, that covers the uh, uh, all the original data. Now, what the algorithm did is uh, it read the original data we had, it uh, decided which is the lowest and the highest value, and then started grouping, uh, started cutting it to the ranges we had specified and creates a hierarchy like this. So now that we have created the two hierarchies, uh, we just tell the algorithm, you know, use the hierarchy you created for dates in the date of birth, use the hierarchy for marriage, uh, marriage in the marital status, and just anonymize the data with uh, k equal to three. And um, we get this. And this is actually uh, a lattice that represents all different solutions, uh, all different uh, actually generalization that can come from the original data. Uh, for example, uh, this node represents uh, uh, a solution, a generalization where the date of birth has been generalized four times, four times has gone up this generalization hierarchy that we have uh, created, and the marital status has gone up just one level. Uh, the idea of this lattice is that it offers different trade-offs uh, in information loss. For example, this node means that uh, the date of birth has been generalized four times and marital status once, whereas this node means that the date of birth has been generalized three times and the marital status just two. So depending on how, how important the date of birth is or the marital status is, then we can choose a different uh, node as the best solution. Moreover, the nodes with the blue color are valid nodes that uh, are, represent valid solutions that will give us uh, the, uh, the k-anonymity we desire. The red nodes do not achieve the, the best solution, uh, the, the guarantee that we desire, but sometimes they miss this guarantee for very few nodes. For example, we have 
the solution that has, uh, uh, I think, uh, it has generalized the marital status three times and uh, uh, the date of birth three times and the marital status once. And it, and it has only 2.2% of the records that violate uh, the guarantee we desire. So instead of generalizing all the data more, we can just delete these records and then get this as a final solution. And uh, let me see if we get an example somewhere. Okay, we got here. This uh, on the left, we have the original data and on the right, the anonymized data. Now the date of birth is gone uh, and we have just a uh, two year period. Uh, the marital status uh, has been changed from the original values and it's now given on just married or not married. And uh, the records that appear as uh, red on the anonymized data will be completely removed and uh, deleted from the output. So uh, this concludes the, uh, the anonymization process for, uh, for, for this table. We just uh, save uh, this data as, a data as a local data set and we have uh, uh, anonymized data. And uh, yes, this concludes the anonymization uh, process.